this thing that's on my face has turned into a big controversy in the United States of America. There are folks from both sides of this argument who are at each other's throats because of this thing. Speaking for myself, I cannot stand this thing. I do not agree with this decision that the governor decided to force upon the folks here in New York, but it is the rule, and I am a firm believer in following rules. So that being said, right, let me tell you a little tiny story that took place yesterday, real small. As I was heading out the door, keep in mind that I haven't been outside in quite some time. And I decided to go to the supermarket just to stock up. That's how I am. I like to make sure that if things begin to decrease in my home, I want to make sure that they, you know, go back up. So me not being a driver because I don't drive, only my wife is the driver in this family. I have my shopping cart and I decided to... uh take it with me, and I had to walk several blocks away from here. I live in the Gun Hill section in the Bronx, and I had to, I had to uh, use the power, the gift of locomotion that the Lord gave me from here to Allerton Avenue in the Bronx, for those of you who are familiar. So anyway, as I was pushing my cart, I noticed a couple of people along the way who did not wear a mask. I just looked I just looked at them and then I just kept going. And then when I went in the, when I went into the store, keep in mind that in New York City you cannot enter any store unless you have a mask on. They will not let you in. So, I went into the supermarket, picked up what I needed to get. And then as I left the store, from a distance I saw a lady pushing a stroller and her and the child did not have a mask on. So I kept on going, and then up the block, I ran into another lady who did not wear a mask. Now, what is, why am I bringing all this up? This is why. I am a firm believer in following the rules, you see. I'm a firm believer of that. And uh, Due to the nature of Adam that dwells within each and every human being on the face of this planet, there, there's, there's this thing within the nature that just causes the individual to just rebel and go against the grain. I'm just checking the time. And uh, I, what I witnessed to me, in my opinion, because I have to be careful here, because according to John chapter 7, verse 20, 24, you're not supposed to, as believers, judge according to appearance, but judge according to righteous judgment, meaning judge based on the evidence. So as I was heading back home, I was talking to the Lord, and that passage of scripture crossed my mind, and I said, Lord, I am judging these people based on the evidence and what I am seeing are the people, these people who are being disobedient to the law. I mean, not to the rules. And uh, that's not right. Even though I do not agree with the direction that Governor Andrew Cuomo took us through, right, here in New York, I don't agree with it at all. I don't. I really don't. You have your opinion, I have mine, so be it. I don't agree with it. However, he laid down the rules and we as residents of the state of New York, we are supposed to abide by the rules, no matter what you think, no matter what your opinion is. Now, that being said, right, I had a friendly conversation with a brother in Christ about this topic. We was discussing 
Romans chapter 13 and the Constitution. Actually, it was me who started the conversation because I, you know, began the chat. Actually, it was before we even talked, I just posted it on my Facebook wall. I was plainly saying that, yes, what's happening now with these things, with the social distancing, with the mask and the fact that, you know, we as believers cannot come together, you know, in our churches. But at the same time, they are labeling the liquor stores in New York as essential businesses, which is a, you know, a slap in the face to us believers. I was telling my brother in Christ that, yes, these things are violating our constitutional rights, and I am a firm believer and a and and a and and, a, and an advocate. Uh, spit it out, Jose. An advocate for the Constitution. I stand by the Constitution. I believe in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever. All of those amendments, I will stand by them until I perish. However, how, but but here's the thing. The scriptures which were written thousands of years ago, in my opinion, and it's not just my opinion, but biblically speaking, these writings, these sacred writings, are above the Constitution. And that is precisely the point that I was trying to present to my brother who disagreed, and that's fine. I'm not trying to put him or anybody else on the spot because I love my brother and I love the brethren. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19, if I'm not mistaken, the Apostle Paul said that there must be differences of opinion among you so that the truth may be known. So within the branches of Christ, right? Within, you know, Christ is our tree. And these denominations are the branches. And then you have individuals who don't even go to church like myself who are part of the tree. We all have differences of opinion. And according to the Apostle Paul, he said that's fine. So that being said, right? My point, and I'm going to go back to it, is the fact that the scriptures, the Holy Bible, the word, the word of the Lord stands above the Constitution. Remember, the Constitution is several, it's about over 200 years old, right? And the scriptures, which were written a long time ago, is thousands of years old. And what I'm about to read to you right now, I'm going to look for it, is uh, Romans chapter 13. I'm just going to go over a couple of verses just to uh, prove the Lord's point. You see, this is not my point because the scripture says, according to Joseph from the book of Genesis, he said, do not all interpretations belong to the Lord. So therefore, what I'm sharing with you is the Lord's interpretation, not the preacher man's interpretation. So it says here in Romans 13, Everyone must obey the governing authorities. Let me stop right there before I continue. This clearly states that we must obey whoever that's above us. You see, I work for the Marriott Hotel. I work for the Essex House. They set rules in place. And I must obey those rules. And if I don't obey those rules, I'm going to be terminated. So for those of you who are familiar with Romans 13, who thinks that what the Apostle Paul wrote mm -hmm. here is only for the government, you are in error. Because what Paul was saying here is that whoever is in a position of authority, you must obey him. Okay. Now, this thought just crossed my mind. I thought about this before, and I actually shared this with my brother in Christ on Facebook. 
after I say that, then I'm going to continue reading from Romans 13. I presented to him this, uh, this, this, this opinion of mine. This is an opinion of mine. When Pharaoh uh, decided to make slavery the law of the land, right? When he was in control of the Jews, the Jews, even though they were crying out for deliverance, the Lord did not deliver them immediately. And you might say to yourself, where, where was the Lord in that situation before he decided to send Moses to free the Jews? The Lord was on the throne, just like, you know, just like all the wars in history, all the atrocities in history, including 9-11, the JFK assassination, the Vietnam War, all of these things, the mass and murders, all of these things, the Lord has always remained on the throne. And sadly, some believers don't respect his sovereignty, his judgments, his wisdom, his ways. They are reasons why the Lord will not react immediately to certain things because he will respond to those things in his timing, not yours. What we have to do on our part is to pray to the Lord and be patient. Wait on him. There's, there's many verses in the Bible that talks about waiting on the Lord. So that being said, I believe that the reason why, which is my opinion, why the Lord did not respond immediately to the prayers of the Jews during Pharaoh's reign is because I believe that the Lord was testing them to see if they will remain obedient to Pharaoh, even though Pharaoh was an evil king. So that being said, I believe that what's happening right now was ordained by the Lord with the intent to see who is going to remain obedient during this time. And I am referring to the fact that these rules, which are not laws, these rules that are set in place right now, the Lord is watching very carefully to see who is going to go against the grain, who is going to uh, uh, look at Cuomo and say, you know, to hell with you. I'm not going to uh, listen to you. I'm not going to obey your rules. See, if you are a believer who has those thoughts in your, in your heart, then you need to check yourself and deeply examine yourself spiritually because you're not on board with the Lord. You're not on board with his word. You see what I'm saying? Yes, there are many believers in Christ who stand firm, you know, when it comes to the Constitution, just like me, but the Bible surpasses the Constitution. The Bible is beyond the Constitution. So let me continue from where I left off. It says here, Everyone must obey the governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, you see? And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. That means Andrew Cuomo received his power from the Lord. Just like when Jesus had that conversation with Pontius Pilate, when Jesus told him that it was my father who gave you that position of authority, Keep in mind that Donald Trump is in power because of God. According to Daniel chapter 5, verse 21, it is him who, who works through the kingdoms of this world. And he, the Lord himself, alone will decide who he wants to put in certain positions. So that being said, right, it says here, anyone who goes against Authority is opposing what God has set in place, and those who do so will be punished. You see? This, this is not saying anything about the Constitution. This is God's word, which, which was written years before the Constitution. That is the point that I'm trying to drive home in this video, that we must obey the word of the Lord whether you like it or not. And it says here that uh, <clears throat> anyone who goes against, okay, I said that part, 
For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you, but if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid. For they have the power to punish you. You see that? They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. This is the New Living Translation. According to the King James Version, which I love in this part, which I just read to you, this one says, they are God's servants. The King James, the King James Version says that the authority is God's avenger. I love that part. And I'm not referring, and I'm not trying to connect the movie The Avengers to this. I just love how the King James Version, you know, displayed that truth. So it says here, right? So you must submit to them not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. You see, I'll stop right there because so far, 16 minutes in this video and I don't want to make this video super long so in closing what am I trying to get at what I'm trying to uh, to show you from scripture not from the mind of the preacher man what I am saying is that we must always put God's word first before our opinions the Constitution is definitely the law of the land. I believe, like I said, Governor Cuomo and other governors across this nation are violating uh, the constitutional rights of the people in America. I firmly believe that and I stand with my brothers and sisters who also share my views on that matter. Nevertheless, the word of God is above the Constitution. Always. And if you still are in disagreement about that, then instead of sharing your thoughts in the comment section below, it is best for you to take what I said and bring it to the Lord in prayer and let him speak to you. Let the spirit of God who is dwelling within you tell you these things. And if you go against what he revealed to you in private through prayer, then you got a problem with yourself. Your Christianity is just off the wall. And if that's the case, then you need to repent and you need to, within yourself, create this obedience factory so that that factory will be, will be based upon the word of God instead of the word of man. This is the preacher man signing out. May the Lord Yeshua Mashiach bless you all and your families. And in Yeshua's holy name, I say, Amen. Peace.